Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the UBC Master of Data Science Student and Alumni Live Q&A session. My name is Haley. I am the Education Specialist for this program as well as an alumna. I will be acting as moderator for this Facebook Live event today. Just a few points that I want to mention before I introduce our wonderful panel is this section will be focusing on the experience of the students during their time at the program and if you have any questions regarding admissions, prerequisites, or scholarships, don't worry, you can save those and ask those during our next webinar that is designed for this purpose. You will get an opportunity to ask them in the event in January 2020. If you have any questions related to the courses, the student lifestyle, or the curriculum, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. And we will do our best to address them. Today, we are gonna be starting with questions that have been submitted in advance. I've been told that the hour goes by pretty quickly, so I want to apologize in advance if I do not tackle your specific question, but remember, uh, as we go on, we may be addressing similar questions and throughout the Q&A. If you have questions that we do not address at all through this live Q&A, you are always free to email or call us, and we will attempt to answer them then. We also have our Q&A page on our website that might help you answer your question as well. Now I'm gonna introduce our wonderful panel. We have three alumni, uh, Maud, Talha, Nassim, and our current student, Alistair. So I'm gonna start with Maud on this end. If you could just introduce yourself, your cohort year, what your background was coming into the program, and if applicable, where you're working now. Uh, hello, my name is Maud. Uh, I'm from the cohort of, that graduated in 2018. Um, my background was statistics. I was already enrolled in a Master of Statistics in France. Uh, I'm an international student from France. And uh, right now, I am working in a digital marketing consultancy firm uh, downtown Vancouver called Cardinal Path. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Talha. Uh, I graduated from the MDS program uh, just this summer, so from the class of 2019. Uh, I currently work here in Vancouver for uh, Adolis, which is a uh, software, industrial software firmware analysis company. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Nassim. I'm from the first cohort, um, class of 2017. Uh, currently, I work at BCS Stats, Government of British Columbia. Um, my bachelor is industrial engineering. I have another master's from University of Waterloo in management sciences. And hey everyone, I'm Alistair. I'm a current student. Uh, before I came here, I graduated from civil engineering. That was about eight or nine years ago. And then I worked as a management consultant for a bit and then for an e-learning company in uh, the US. And I just started in September. Great, thanks so much. Um, how do we feel about going into our first question? Uh, I just want to point out that these questions are not in a very specific order. I'm, in t I'm going to be attempting to ask as many as possible from a variety of categories. Uh, and I'm sorry if there may not be a little structure to this. So starting off with the first question, I just want to t ask you what really got you interested in data science as a career? What made you want to go into this field? I can start. <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, so my, as I mentioned, my bachelor was industrial engineering, and then I started um, um, studying Master of Management Science at Waterloo, but then I started working at Deloitte Consulting um, in CRM team, and then I was a um, consultant kind of between developers and, consult, uh, and, and the business stakeholders, and um, I was all, all the time I was dealing with million records, and, that were, and, then, and those records were sitting on the laptop, and I was thinking, why don't you make sense of those um, information and also um, I, I was very interested in math and uh, coding and um, all of, because of all of these reasons I, I decided to study uh, data science and um, also consider that I knew that data science uh, is going to be a big and hot topic um, in, um, in, few, in future, in few years and, and that's why I decided to study data science. I had almost the exact same experience oh, as you, which is interesting. Uh, like, I was interested in math analytics, but the main thing that caught my ear was at work, I was running into all these problems that no one knew how to solve. Right. So, for example, um, my last company, we had an email list of almost 500,000 people, and we had all this data on them, but we were using the most superficial things, like little surveys and stuff to analyze it. And so I was like, there's got to be a better way to figure these things out. And then I started a little Googling, and yeah, yeah that's how I came across yeah, exactly. it. So it sounds so similar. Perfect. 
Um, does anyone have anything else? So what made you decide specifically the Master's of Data Science program versus learning, sorry, of, of, at UBC versus any other uh, university? Um, I, I will say that for me, the program uh, had a great combination of a, a professional uh, look at this rather than a very research-oriented uh, approach. And then, but it was also not very shallow. Like it was very technically, it had technical depth and the faculty is really great. Um, yeah, so I want, uh, also want to mention that I applied to other universities um, and then I got admission, I think, for other two, from other two uh, universities, but I decided to come to uh, this program because I think this program is a joint of computer science and stats and most of the core, and half of the courses, I guess, are from computer science, half of them are from stats, but the other programs that I have been looking into, they are he um, very focusing heavily on computer science or stats, so that's the main reason that I chose this program. There are a lot of different online resources and programs and certificates. Were there any particular reason that you wanted to be at UBC versus taking those, or? Um, yeah, I have no motivation at all when it comes to <laughs> studying <laughs> online, so I need to go to class physically, uh, ask questions, and interact with other people, those work, yeah. those students' motivation. Yeah, I would just yeah, I would just add actually that uh, a lot of learning actually comes from doing uh, real world problems, and um, capstone was something that really attracted me. Um, I was able to read up on experiences of previous students um, uh, on the M on the MDS blog, and uh, they were really inspiring. I thought that if I am put in similar circumstances and I'm equipped with the tools to look at data very critically, uh, yeah, I would learn a lot uh, more than I would in online. It's a lot more hands-on. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, can I just add something to this one? Because I think this is a question a lot of people, I was asking the same thing. Uh, the reason I chose to come here, like the advice you'll see from a lot of people is just start orienting yourself towards more data work at your current job and make the transition that way. For me, that wasn't an option. Like the role I was in was much more creative and there wasn't an easy way to start transitioning. So I saw coming to this program as a way to almost like rebrand myself, coming out of it as with those data science skills, whereas it would have taken way longer and I would have had to do all these backward steps if I tried to do it in my current job, and this was a way to just give me quick credibility when I go back to the job market. I just want to add that for me, it was, I think, uh, on top of all of these reasons, uh, I found a very good network, mm -hmm. and um, and we are, um, because in the first go we were 20 people and we are all friends now, and we, are, we see each other um, um, probably like once a month, and uh, I think the network was also great. Yeah. I can add to that as well. I, you yeah. make a great um, net of people from the program. Um, what recommendations would you have for self-learning to prepare oneself for this program? Was there anything you specifically did, um, especially if you weren't from like as, as technical of a background? I'll throw it out because I saw this question <laughs> yeah. before and it had like a, a, there was a specific course I took online through Coursera. It was an MIT course called Introduction to Con Computer Science Through Learning Python or something like that. It's 6.001. I found it incredibly useful because it covered a broad range of the things that we're actually covering in the course right now, all the way from basic Python syntax to statistics to a little bit of machine learning. And that, I tried a bunch of other things. I learned a little linear, linear algebra, some coding, but that course is the one that's consistently been useful for at least the first three months or whatever it's been of the program so far. Yeah, yeah thanks. Also, um, I also want to add that as soon as you get the admission and you accept the offer, I think it's very important to refresh your knowledge of linear algebra, math, uh, coding, especially R and Python, um, and um, calculus. Um, so derivatives, all of these concepts are coming multiple times during the program. It's very important to have a very good background um, in these concepts. And um, if you know them very well, um, you're going to be, the labs and assignments are going to be much easier for you. That being said, they do teach you this uh, yeah. in the program. It just, you'll feel much more prepared and at ease uh, because it's happening quite quickly. Um, this is probably more specific to Nassim and Maud here. If English is your, not your first language, 
but you passed uh, all the language requirements. Would you find this program, did you find this program challenging in terms of terminology? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, in terms of terminology, not that much because uh, specific technical words are often not translated or translated almost literally in French. So um, especially for computer science courses, you do them in English basically with some sort of French sugar coating around the words, but it's basically <laughs> English. Uh, so it wasn't too hard in terms of terminology. Uh, what you need to be prepared is that it's intensive. Uh, having three hours of lectures given in English when it's not your first language by people who are not native English speaker either, so they have accent, uh, it can be very, very challenging. I had some of my instructor I could not understand, <laughs> um, especially during the first block, until it, I got used to hearing English all the time. Uh, yeah, I think for me, I didn't have any problem because I think um, I came to Canada 10 years ago uh -huh. and then I studied and work here. Um, but on, on top of that, I, I would say, um, as she said, um, yeah, um, so the program is more, is kind of technical. So uh, as long as you understand the lectures and you can communicate with your friends and instructors and as long as um, uh, you understand, and the coding and math, and these languages are global, yeah. so yeah. so you wouldn't have problem. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Mm. Uh, do you want to talk about a little bit about the makeup of your specific cohort? I know we have a bit of a different range of what your co uh, of each cohort. Um, how and how is it? The, how is the interaction with them? I know we touched on this earlier that it was very night tight knit, but uh, what's the diversity like? Um, I will, I'll start actually that um, I, I found the diversity is great, not just uh, in terms of um, you know people coming from different ethnic or international Background. backgrounds, but there's also a, an academic and professional background uh, difference. So um, what I personally felt was a great sense of belonging, uh, you know, in such a diverse crowd, um, and you're constantly being paired with people to do uh, project-based work. So I, I felt like I, I developed some really strong bonds. Um, yeah, even though I've, I've passed uh, the program now, I'm still in touch with those people and I've got some, some good friends. Yeah. The other thing is I think that with the different, um, the different career backgrounds and um, academic backgrounds is they everyone has something else to offer. Mm -hmm. So you learn a lot from them. Uh, we're gonna move a little bit more on to the courses and the curriculum here. Um, who and where did you usually go to if you were stuck and you needed to figure out a problem? What kind of path did you go on to, to fix or solve that? We all answer, I'm living this right now. So <laughs> yeah. I this experience. So for example, like we just had a couple of lectures this morning before I came here. During the lecture, if I have something I'm not really sure about, I'll just quickly Google Stack Overflow. If it's something quick, I need a like short answer. Or maybe I'll open up one of the textbooks if that doesn't work or I don't find the answer, I'll probably start by asking one of my classmates. So we just talked about the leaning on people that you'd be around you. Just a direct message or a couple of people you might study with, I'll ask them next. Then in the lab, I'll probably ask a question uh, to the lab instructors or the TAs. And if that doesn't work, maybe the office hours is another, another place I would go for like more one-on-one -on -one long time. I guess kind of illustrating, there's so many resources that you can go to that you'll usually get your question answered. Yeah. I'll touch on one thing that, um, as you mentioned, uh, reaching out to your, your cohort. Um, what I like the leadership has done is they've, they've used technology like Slack and made it really easy where you have uh, those conversation channels uh, specific to different courses. And uh, you, sometimes you don't even have to ask. You know there's a conversation going, and you can pick up a lot yeah. of things from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd be surprised, personally, I'm, I'm just going to say my experience is uh, there would be times where I'd have a question or I'd be having some software issue or whatnot, and I would get, sometimes I would uh, message either on the Slack channel or uh, a lecturer themselves, and they come back really quick. Sometimes it's at 10, 8 p.m., and they are <laughs> on there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, you have lots of options. Um, this is, uh, there's going to be a couple questions surrounding this, is what does the coursework look like? Um, and are there any group assessments or projects? What's the structure there? 
you want me to answer? Yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we were talking before how it's changed a bit, so I can give the rundown now. So uh, the way you're assessed, the, most courses have labs and quizzes. And there's one lab for each course in each week, and then there's two quizzes for those courses. That's most of the courses have that lab quiz structure. Uh, some courses are more project-based. So for example, um, we're just about to start a course on data visualization where we're building dashboards. And so rather than doing quizzes or labs, the outcome that we're trying to create is a dashboard uh, that's gonna have visualization. And we're gonna be graded on that. And then other courses, we're also graded on presentations. And so that's a different spin of, of like a project-based course that's coming out. We have a lot of different projects uh, for different courses. Uh, only one or two in the first semester, but uh, the second semester for three of the blocks, we had a lot of projects. <laughs> and some projects, you do them alone, and some projects, you do them two or three people. Sometimes you choose who you do your project with, and sometimes you don't. So it's also a way to work with other people uh, that you might not already know that well, uh, that have different background, different strengths, uh, and that was very interesting. That was what I, I preferred. Yeah, I, I think the program has changed a lot, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I guess, so I'm not sure if I talk about my experience going to be the same, but for us, we had courses in the morning and the yeah. lab was oh, in yeah. the after. Is, I'm not yeah, sure. it's Is the same. same? Yeah. Right? Okay. We'll have two, like we're working on four courses at once. Each day we'll have two lectures in the morning yeah, and then one the lab in the afternoon. Yeah. So it's yeah. like theory in the morning and then practical application exactly. of all the things yeah. you learned in the afternoon, which is great. I love it with that setup. Now, this is probably going to be, the, there's quite a lot of similar questions with this, and it gets asked a lot, is uh, explain the intensity of the program. How intense is it? Is the homework doable? Um, is it easy to understand all the knowledge there? Give a little bit of a comment there. <laughs> yeah, so it was very intense. <laughs> very intense. Just to say this, uh, we had classes four days a week from Monday to Thursday and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday we would be off but not really. Mm -hmm. uh, we would usually come back on Friday. We had a special lecture given by one of our instructors that was optional so a lot of people were actually showing up to that and then we would just stay on campus and study all Friday and sometimes also on Saturday and sometimes also <laughs> on Sunday when we had projects especially. Uh, so especially during the second term, um, most of my weekends were not weekends at all. But it also depends how much you're willing to put into it um, and how perfect you want your answers to be. You can do a decent job in a res yeah. reasonable time. Uh, it's Especially for projects, it's really a matter of how in depth you want to go. Yeah. I would just like to add, um, so I thought about this, because um, a lot of people have asked me about the intensity, and I would say, if I had to put it on scale of 0 to 10, I would say maybe a 7.5 to an 8. Uh, mm -hmm. And because what I, what I think is, in a nutshell, it was so intense that I, um, I felt like, yeah, my money and time was worth spent. And, um, but at the same time, um, my personal life didn't fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, the, the piece that I liked was um, in labs uh, that you t take home, um, there's uh, questions that are required and some that are optional. Mm -hmm. So you, you can kind of gauge for yourself. Um, and, and obviously it, it varies based on your background, uh, what you were doing prior to MBS. Uh, that's some areas you might feel more comfortable mm -hmm. with. Uh, yeah, I just want to add that, uh, <laughs> um, that for us it was also intense. And I think uh, the structure of the program has changed because they're always getting feedback from and students, so uh, I heard it's much better now, but at the same time, I, I wanna say that the advantage of um, just being the part of an intense program is that I feel more confident right now that I can handle a very fast-paced environment and very challenging and hard deadlines. Yeah. Uh, so I think um, after the program, I feel definitely more confident um, about handling different challenges. Um, one thing I do want to uh, add to that is that during, I think, both uh, the first block, or the first cohort and the second cohort, um, 
the labs were due on Sunday. Whereas for us, we were lucky and they were due on Saturday night. So they really do give you that extra day of rest, <laughs> which very much helps. Yeah, I, should, yeah, I just want to correct you that for us, it the labs were due on various days. They were like, yeah, it was oh, wow. on <laughs> Yeah, that's new And we had quizzes and, yeah. Um, what, and Alice, did you have any thoughts on um, the intensity of the program now? Yeah, I'll add something, because I heard a lot of people say before I came, it's intense, it's intense, and I was like, what, is that, what does that really mean? And what I found is, uh, it's the speed you cover topics is what makes it intense for me, where usually you might take a whole semester to cover one of these courses, but we're doing it in four weeks, and so we'll have a lecture on Monday where we cover a big topic, but then by the time Wednesday comes around, you're moved on and you're on something else, and if you don't learn what you learned on Monday and really ingest it, it gets harder and you fall behind on Wednesday and it can stack. And so mm -hmm. I think the intensity comes from trying to make sure that every day when we hear something lecture, I really understand it and learn it. And it's all that extra reading I do late in the day that, that makes it so intense. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think also because as the program uh, continues forward, you're using all of the knowledge you learned in the previous blocks too. Yeah. So now also if you haven't completely grasped or solidified your um, the concepts, further on in the program that could that could be an issue. So you really want to make sure you study. <laughs> uh, let's go into the next question. Does anyone have anything else to add? Um, so the, the labs that you get each week, um, how the, the exact question is, how doable are they in such a short period of time for each course? And which block with those labs specifically did you find the most intensive in terms of the amount of homework that you're getting, as well as knowledge? <laughs> um, I think that the option of uh, having those optional questions in labs um, really facilitates your learning. You can kind of uh, decide for yourself to a little bit that I want to go a bit deeper into one topic. Um, so, and, and if something is taking too much of your time, you can kind of um, you know, compromise on some optional questions somewhere else. <laughs> Um, this is a bit more of a fun question. I'm sure you'll like answering this. Um, the most exciting course you've taken at MDS so far? Alistair, this might. So <laughs> far, <yeah. laughs> But uh, the rest of you is. It's a hard one. I'm thinking, <laughs> no, lots of interesting ones. But I, uh, I think I personally, um, I would say uh, the advanced machine learning. Uh, the very like the last uh, block so basically you understand and you see that everything comes together and you can um, so they are, they are talking about natural language processing image processing and and in a real world and you can see the application of what you have studied in the real world and those concepts um, I mean that course was very interesting for me for similar reasons, I also really enjoyed uh, the course on time series because it's a little more statistic <laughs> than <laughs> AI, uh, than advanced machine learning, but it's also touching a lot of different courses that we did before and putting all of those together uh, to work on time series, and it is a challenging one. I really, really yeah, enjoyed that I one. remember that one. <laughs> Um, similar thing, what is the coolest thing that MDS has taught you um, that you would not have come across otherwise? It's hard to pick one, I know. I, I'll <laughs> jump in because there's just one I was thinking of today. So like this morning we had courses on supervised learning and linear regression and last block we were talking about statistical inference. And one of the cool things is all three of those courses tie together and they're spending a lot of time showing you the linkages. Whereas I think sometimes if you just read a book on machine learning about linear regression, it'll just say, fit this line, there's a slope and, a, and an intercept, done. And on to the next thing, but they're really taking time talking about the connection between inference and regression and how there are the estimators and inference and the prediction, how it all ties together. And I don't think I would have come across that just using the resources you find online that like simplify things to what you type into the code to get the, the model to work. Okay, I'm going to move on to this. Thank you, Alistair. I'm going to move on to the next <laughs> section, which is a little bit lighter. Um, it's the, li the school life work balance. Um, are you were you were any of you able to hold a part time job during this program? <laughs> I 
didn't. No. <laughs> no. I didn't even try to. Um, one of my classmates is actually a company owner, and he was still actively involved uh, in his company while being here. Uh, he wasn't doing as many projects as he was when he was still uh, working them full time, but he was having lots of late night conversation with his partner, with his uh, subordinates. So it's possible. Um, I did not even try to do that. <laughs> yeah. I work part time right now still. So it's for the company I was working for before I joined up. I just stayed on as a consultant. So I'll do five to 10 hours on Friday. And just what that means for me is instead of getting all my labs done on Friday, I'll just have to do them Saturday or a little bit earlier in the week to catch up. But uh, so far it's been okay, yeah. Just for those uh, watching, Friday is a day that the students do not have any lectures or labs to attend, so that's why he was able to do so. Um, let's go on to the next one. Um, what do you do outside of MDS to maintain that like balance? Were there anything that you maintained? Did you still go to the gym? Were there any activities? I know in my cohort there's someone who was still on their badminton team. What would you do? We would go swimming once a week, once or twice for me. Uh, every Wednesday afternoon, evening, after the lab, as soon as the lab ended, we would just go swimming, then grab something to eat and go home. And on Friday too, when we were not overflown with the labs, uh, so that was nice. I really enjoyed doing that. Uh, for me, it was snowboarding. Uh, UBC has a nice uh, Whistler discount. <laughs> so I, I got that student pass, and uh, Sundays after completing those labs, it was like a, a day to just get away from Vancouver, get, just get away from everything. <laughs> Perfect. Um, how many hours per week outside of the class is recommended for completing coursework and um, studying? I know it's a very, it's a very yeah. specific question, yeah. it's it changes. I can answer so far my experience because I, I don't know why I track every day how much time I spend. Oh, yeah, wow. so I got these little dots and stuff. So <laughs> I looked at it because I figured you're gonna ask this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my day is so data driven, but my day is like nine to 12, we'll have lectures, that's three hours. Yeah. And then the lab is two hours, so that's five hours. Outside of that, I'll spend on the low end, like four hours studying and that'll be split. Sometimes I'll come in early, do a couple hours before there's that two hour break between classes and then a little bit more in the evening. So on the low end, I'll spend four hours outside of class on like the busiest days, maybe seven hours. And that's just like, if there's optional stuff I wanna read and like get, get deep on. But it's been in that range from Monday to Thursday. Friday, like I said, I don't do anything. And then on Saturday, maybe another four hours and then Sunday, nothing. Sunday is what I called my my stupid day. I would yeah, I like that. <laughs> change it, um, forget and not forget, but relax a bit. Um, I want to talk a, a little. Take this opportunity to talk a little bit about careers now. Um, we had one question come in specifically that I'm going to address. Um, actually, let's go to this one here. Um, what are the typical career paths for students and alumni out of the program? So there's a lot of different ways. You don't just become a data scientist. What were some of the career paths that you explored or that you've heard <laughs> of your cohort? Yeah, um, yeah I've seen um, that people after MDS, uh, they can become a um, data analyst, machine learning engineer. Um, I think one of uh, my uh, friends from our core is a software engineer. <laughs> uh, a consultant, uh, but in a data science area, um, big data engineer, uh, yeah, so so all of <laughs> these ones, yeah. yeah. I would just like to add that uh, a lot of people have um, come from work experience in a certain domain or in a certain industry, and a lot of times they go back to it, um, so I've seen that as a very successful way as well. But also, um, for myself maybe, I actually kind of changed that. Uh, I was coming from more consulting and uh, went more into a software company now. Um, so there's that route too. And uh, the good thing is, is like there's a lot of a variety of bigger and smaller companies. So you can see uh, maybe a bigger company already has a set department for data science. And uh, you could go in and join that team or you could go to a much smaller company that has been acquiring a lot of data but hasn't yet figured out ways that they want to use it as a valuable asset. Yeah. I'd say for data science, jobs like 
really focusing on data science. It's mainly consultant work, uh, as most companies don't have the resources to hire a full-time data scientist. And it's also usually paired with some data engineering. Yeah. So just get ready that pure data science <laughs> is almost non-existent um, outside. So is there, that based working on that, is, the, is there a high demand for data scientists in Canada, do you think? I think when you uh, when you address it in that broad category of a data scientist, you know, who's also doing some data engineering and data analysis, uh, some machine learning, um, yeah, I think there's just companies that have all sorts of needs. Uh, sometimes it's at a very short-term need, and maybe they want to hire as a consultant uh, or contract some work, uh, but also for full-time needs. I'd say there's definitely yeah, a lot. I I just want to add that when I compare now from uh, with uh, three years ago, I feel like there are more. Uh, data scientist jobs are coming, and I uh, and I can I talk to different companies, and I, uh, I know that they are um, actually going to build a data analytics team. They are most of them are going to hire uh, d data scientists, and definitely, if I compare from uh, like this year to three years ago, there are definitely more jobs in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to work on this question a little bit. Given the program and your current employments now that you're, do you feel that the program uh, successfully prepared you for your new, your new uh, employments? Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I think for me, honestly, I, I always go back um, to all of my lectures, my labs, when I mm, do my job, because I, I'm, I, as I said, I'm at thesis that, so I, I refer <laughs> to my um, to the lectures about R, I refer to the lectures about natural language processing, refer to the lectures about statistic, probability, and um, vi data visualization. I, I work with Shiny App. Um, so, <laughs> so definitely all of these concepts have been covered during the program and I've learned in this program. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Go on to the next one. Does this 10-month program that UBC offers, do you believe that it provides enough placement for you, this job that you just took, the, the, the new career path that you took? So it's a lot in a short yeah. period of time. Do you feel like you, this, was, this course gave you enough for the job? I think I just asked. Yeah, I think uh, maybe if, if I want to jump in. Yeah. So I, I'll say that um, MDS is designed to cover a a breadth of topics and um, uh, you know depending on the career that you choose um, it might not be that you could use every single course uh, but you definitely take a lot of stuff um, and because it's we're not just talking about some of the computer science ways of like um, storing and uh, accessing data but also some of the statistical methods to interpret it and uh, machine learning techniques so there's a, a wide variety of stuff that you learn and uh, you're then equipped to go and um, work with data out in the field at a company um, uh, trying different techniques. So yeah, I think um, we're prepared really well. Perfect, thank you. Um, do you find yourself doing anything in your current employment that you didn't learn in the course? I do, yeah. uh, because a big part of my job is around data engineering, mm -hmm. so I had to learn how to use all the cloud platforms, uh, product. We work with Google mainly, um, so my company actually asked me to take the Google certificates around uh, data engineering and learn all, of all those products. We touched some of it, or oh, something similar uh, during the course, but definitely not that many. Um, it's a lot to cover. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot to cover. Yeah, I, I would just add that I think going into different domains um, requires you to learn some things about that particular domain. I'm like I'm now in around cybersecurity, and I have to know a bit about cryptography, hashing. Um, yeah, these things, um, even though weren't part of MDS, um, but I don't need to know this as a part of my job really. Um, like I don't. That's not my function. But um, uh, yeah, definitely your learning doesn't stop at the end of MDS. <laughs> Was there any topics that weren't covered in MDS that you would have liked to have seen in the curriculum based also on this? 
maybe I'm biased in this <laughs> answer a little bit that I, I wish there was a bit, um, a bit more around big data. Uh, like um, I think w what we're covering in MDS a lot is around the algorithms or uh, some of the statistical models that are there. Um, and and it, it's fair because this is not a program for big data, but uh, going out in the real world, even data scientists or machine learning engineers uh, have to operationalize models um, at large scales, stuff that does not fit into a laptop's memory. Yeah. <laughs> so you need to, um, yeah, you, need, you often need to like yeah. figure out how to do that. But companies have different models yeah. and architecture in place, so it's kind of hard to learn that mm -hmm. at school, but I think that would be one area. I guess this is uh, more directed at you, Alistair, is yeah. that they are, they are making changes to that, so I think there will yeah. be more big data okay. um, material <laughs> coming <Exactly. up. laughs> I just want to add to this question that, um, honestly, right now, Right now, I read different books from three years ago. I usually listen to online courses. And most of the time when I read an article or read, uh, listen to an online course or read more about data, so I feel like I've heard about the names during the program. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. interesting for me that the program of 10 months, uh, the materials, uh, th they were very good. That even if right now I read an article, maybe I don't know it <laughs> in depth. but. I have uh, I have heard about that during the lectures uh, or during the labs, and this is very interesting for me. Yeah. So you mentioned that you read articles. I guess this goes to this yeah. question: um, How do you keep your data science knowledge, uh, tech, knowledge and techniques up to date after you've left the program? Then you, you uh, mentioned articles. For, for me, honestly, I, I I would say I learn every day. Uh, it never ends for me, and I would never say I'm hundred percent know everything about data, data science. So I. Um, yeah, I read books, um, I listen to different online courses, um, I even go on GitHub, there are lots of free books, articles, um, that I read a lot there. Ma, do you do anything yeah. to keep yours up um, Well, I rely on my friend and <laughs> teammates <laughs> to provide me with articles. I also go to data science meetup in Vancouver from time to time. Uh, and they I think are I've seen you at one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, <laughs> most likely. <laughs> uh, Matt is always uh, like Matt from the very first cohort. Yeah. Oh, Matt, yeah. he's in all of them. Yeah. So <laughs> but yes, um, and they always such new ways, new techniques. Uh, so yeah, we mentioned before about having a close knit. You're getting a really big, uh, great network. And uh, some of the people in my cohort, we put together um, a Google document that has all these cool resources in it that we share with each other. And we're always looking up what's new on that, that sheet. Um, these next couple questions are specific to the capstone projects. So you will be getting to be see that soon. <laughs> uh, this might be actually fun for you. Yeah. Um, but what kind of industries do you work with with your capstone? So mine was with uh, Thinkific, which is an online platform for course creator. So people come and build their websites on their platform uh, using their platform. And we were building a recommend some sort of recommendation system. Uh, it's not a recommendation system in the usual sense of the term, which is why I'm putting quote around it, um, but that was an incredibly interesting project. The data was amazing. We had access to the full uh, database uh, with a lot of user activity from Google Analytics and from uh, Mixpanel too. So we really had amazing data, pretty clean too. Um, yeah, that I really loved it, so I even asked to stay in the company for additional months to do an internship. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a chance to work with a Vancouver-based uh, SaaS startup, so software as a service, and um, uh, what, what I really liked about that was it was actually th kind of throwing us out into the wild where, you know, you're dealing with real-world problems, um, but at the same time, uh, we had faculty mentors um, who were a lot more experienced, um, and they would always suggest us um, you know, different research papers uh, or resources that we could use. Um, so there was an active process of learning uh, in there. Um, but I have friends uh, from our cohort who were in uh, all sorts of industries like uh, meal prep to That's engineering, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to, to like engineering earth sciences work. Um, yeah. 
and medical education? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, for my capstone, I work in my current employer, Business Stats, uh, and the project was a natural language processing project, a text analysis, and um, um, yeah, it was it was a great experience, obviously, <laughs> because I'm working there. <laughs> yeah, and then I just want to mention that. Um, so we have been working with MDS um, from three years ago, and every and after my graduation, I come back again as a <laughs> uh, as a mentor uh, and working with the new students on new um, natural language processing projects. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, one thing I do want to add is this is a, this is great for you is that each year the the. Um, so for the last couple of years, the program has been growing, and so the uh, amount of capstone projects have also been growing, so you get even more diversity of, of uh, capstone problems you get to solve in industries, a mixture of industries. <clears throat> um, during your capstone, it is a two-month and eight-week period, um, what was your day-to-day -day like for that project? Uh, we would go in the office and work there, usually from nine to four, five, um, the company was very welcoming for us. Uh, they would come chat with us. They would invite us to all the after work party or lunches. Uh, so we really felt like we were being a part of the company for those two months. Um, we also had a very good, uh, very good relationship inside my group. Uh, we weren't all friends before, but it ended up working very well. So we would usually work by being on, on one task, so do some paralleling of tasks, and yeah, going into the office was a good, a really good point. Yeah, I think for, for my capstone, we right at the very beginning, at kickoff, we were able to kind of make a roadmap of what we were going to do, so um, we had a, a lot of responsibilities besides just like data science, uh, so there was project management, there was documentation, there was communication with the partner, um, and, and even reading up on research papers. So we identified uh, what are things that we could learn that we could implement directly to this capstone. Um, so we had it very organized in that manner, and then um, every day um, we, would, uh, we had the option of either going to the partner's office or working from campus. Um, and then when we would meet, we'd kind of work together, but also giving each other the flexibility to tend to other tasks, uh, maybe if they were interviewing for jobs. Um, so uh, I think it worked out really well. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just want to um, add that for, uh, for me. Um, so I was working with two of my classmates, obviously. <laughs> we also had so much fun and we were going to the office. Uh, but I also want to mention, uh, during our project, it was an NLP project, we had a couple of um, questions that we couldn't move forward. And um, I'm currently, I'm very appreciative that we had the support of one of um, our professors uh, from computer science, uh, Giuseppe, who, who was very knowledgeable about this area. And I remember we were coming to UBC asking questions and um, he guided us uh, through the project, and I think that's that's why that project um, became successful for us. Yeah. So I have more um, of the structure of the capstone. Um, when doing a project with uh, a partner, is the problem already specifically designed, uh, specifically defined, um, or do you have to perform exploratory analysis? Do you get to ask the question? How does that work? In my assessment, the problems were oftentimes uh, fairly defined, um, so it wasn't as vague as if you were to walk into a company and try to understand their processes. Uh, they had identified which data problem were they looking to be attempted to be solved, <laughs> and um, the data was made available to us. Um, and in the months leading up to the capstone, I think the leadership does a good job at um, kind of vetting out <laughs> uh, those uh, those proposals and um, so, just so that everyone's on the same page and then the two months are used as productively as possible. Yeah, yeah the project was really well defined uh, in terms of what the output, what the expectation were. Uh, we knew exactly what we wanted to answer and what type of deliverable we were expected to give. Um, so that helps a lot, obviously. Um, the technique to achieve that was non-existent <laughs> when we took the project on, yeah. uh, and so was uh, what data was available. Like for us, they really just gave us access to everything, and they said 
Good luck. Find, <laughs> find what you need. Um, so we spent a lot of time uh, asking our mentor. She was always available. Uh, at least once a week, we would have a meeting with her almost an hour or even more if we needed to tell her, this is what we did, this is what we want to do next, this is what we need from you, are we aligned on mm -hmm. uh, the technique we're using? So, yeah, when the mentor is really present, that obviously helps a lot, um, especially when they understand what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I have a very uh, different experience from my capstone project. Uh, we had a uh, problem that was very specifically uh, specifically defined and just like in the real world we found out that um, our partner actually wanted to, had a different idea of what they wanted to do so our problem went from an unsupervised problem to a supervised problem a couple weeks in and you make adjustments for it and it worked out pretty well but this is a typical thing that could happen in the real world and you learned a lot from it um, so we talked a little bit about, I think you mentioned uh, when you answered a question that you, you were with people that you didn't know at the beginning of your capstone very well. Um, do you get to choose who your colleagues are? How does the process go when you're choosing a capstone project? Do you pick who you're with and do you pick your actual capstone project? We definitely don't pick who we're with. Mm -hmm. uh, we pick the capstone, which is obviously great because we pick the subject that interests us. Um, with my friend, we have very different interest in terms of what we want to work on. Uh, so I was not expecting to be with any of my very, very close friends from the start anyway. Um, and it's great because we are with people that truly wanted to work on this project. So everybody is motivated. Everybody has an interest in what we're doing, uh, which obviously had to work together. I think we had a bit of a different experience. Did you want to talk about that? <laughs> Um, I, I guess it, it varies, uh, you know, pro project team to project team. Um, I, I, there's the leadership tries their best to make the process as uh, accommodating, fair, but also a learning experience at the same time. So, um, you know, they try to. Um, one of the ways it's it's designed is that students uh, get these pitches from all the capstone part perspective partners, and they rate and rank their choices. And um, that gets fed into um, some decision making by the leadership team, uh, where teams are put together, where the strengths of all the team members are, I guess, kind of kept in mind. Um, yeah, and uh, but sometimes uh, some projects are really desirable. Uh, but the, I think the best lesson I took was um, sometimes the ones that you think are the best are not the best <laughs> <laughs> of projects. Um, and I guess that's a reflection of a real world problems is sometimes you, you know you cannot tell how good something is going to be until you're in the weeds. <laughs> yeah, it's very much true. Um, okay, I think I've answered this. I'm going to leave the next couple minutes to answer a little bit less focused on the program and a little bit more about Vancouver and um, what there is around Vancouver as well. Um, are any of you out, were any of you from outside, well Maud was from France, um, but was it difficult finding a place to live when you were out of town? Yes. <laughs> yes, very difficult. Um, the housing market in Vancouver <laughs> is saturated, <laughs> so finding something cheap and conveniently close to UBC was incredibly hard. I tried to find something when I was still out of the country and people would just not answer me or answer me very politely saying, wait until you're here to actually start uh, looking for housing. So I actually came here and had to stay in a hostel for three weeks until I actually found a place. And I found a place by pure luck during uh, International Orientation Day. I just started talking with someone and she was, oh, my roommate is leaving next week. So come in oh, that's with so me. Um, yeah. Some people actually helped each other. Um, my friend, she found a house that was mainly for Vietnamese people, and she asked the other Vietnamese uh, person in the program, oh, do you want to move in with me? So even before knowing each other, because we were all connected on f the Facebook group, uh, we had interaction, especially mm -hmm. around housing. So we had a few uh, shared houses by only MDS students. Anyone else? I was living here. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I can notice that Facebook group that you mentioned, we actually had um, some people, uh, w once we all knew who was in the program, 
there was uh, a lot of posts that went out being uh, where um, they'd say, oh, we found this house of so many bedrooms. Does, is there anyone who wants to be a part of it? And uh, I know quite a few people who live together from the MDS program, which was pretty nice um, for socializing yeah. <laughs> as well. Yeah. I'll add one thing. I don't know how the process works, but a lot of my classmates live on campus, and mm -hmm. they were all able to get spots to. on campus. Yeah. So I don't know again how yeah, that works, but it worked. That's out. really important. Yeah. Thank you. What happened with me is that I waited until I had confirmation that I was coming here before mm -hmm. applying for mm -hmm. uh, the residency on campus, gotcha. and it was already too late. Uh, mm -hmm. I see. And you were sent on the west <laughs> list, and I got an offer like mid October or November. Oh, we have a, a place <laughs> on campus, but. Too late. By that time, yeah, I was already yes. in my shed house. So, yeah, living at campus is definitely an option. It's more expensive than outside, mm. what you can find in Vancouver, or well, the rest of Vancouver. It's also very convenient because it's really close. Um, and you have to apply very early in the process. Um, did your background that you had beforehand, do you think it prepared you for this program? For me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, for me, I think um, there's several facets. I had an undergraduate in information systems, um, so that helped me a bit more on the computer science side of things. Um, uh, other than that, I think my uh, work experience helped inform the challenges that are in the real world for data science. Um, so in, in consultancy, I, I, I found that um, oh, when I came to, into MDS, I had a vision of what do I want to get out of it afterwards. Um, yeah, I think my background was industrial engineering, so I had lots of probability stat courses and also I think um, my math uh, and maybe when they were talking about derivatives <laughs> or limit, limits, so all of the calculus, uh, I think for me it was easy during the program, um, so I, in that part it helped me, but um, but definitely, uh, yeah, so the computer science concepts uh, were new for me. Um, not as much as I would think. So civil engineering, both <laughs> deal with numbers, but the actual topics, things we study, it was very different. I think the thing that did help was like a natural aptitude for those types of subjects, which depends on how much people believe in like nurture versus nature, whether you're born with a natural aptitude. But I think the people who have had the most success are naturally drawn to numbers, and that's their strength is that type of mode of thinking. Whereas there's other people in, in my program who are very strong, maybe verbally, written, creatively, but sh are having a harder time with some of the hardcore yeah. mathematical understanding. Mm -hmm. So uh, if people are thinking about applying, I think it's important to think about what your true strength is. And if it lines up with this program, you'll have a great time. It'll be a lot easier on you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this and it'll segue into my next question is I was a background in financial modeling, so I had a lot more math statistics background and zero coding background so I prepared myself I took some prerequisites obviously to get into this program um, I had a pr I had a um, before getting in I went into I had I took a course on Python and so that was really great for me but um, the question that I'm trying to segue into is what languages or what programming knowledge um, is used in the program and how much background would you need do you think coming in um, we learn three different languages. We learn Python, R, and we learn SQL. It's not I mean, yeah. a different type of language, but it's very important to know SQL. Very um, important. Yeah. I would say more than actually knowing the language and the syntax of those specific program, programming lang languages, uh, what is important is to have the algorithm mindset. Now how to read an algorithm, how to understand uh, how computing works. Uh, really much more than learning the syn syntax, the actual syntax. The ID is going to help you with that anyway. Um, it's really the logic of how mm -hmm. to build code. Yeah, I, I knew nothing about R, and it's one of, I love writing in R now. So yeah, uh, And I'm not sure if it's, it is still the same, but I remember the first class, um, they were teaching us R and Python, so, like, yeah. probably the first course, I guess, it was uh, teaching R and Python coding, yeah. so. It is still the same. It's the same, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's like two weeks of Python and yeah, then two exactly. weeks of R, yeah. like, the syntax. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
Is there anything you wish people knew about the program uh, that you think is important for potential students to know? Are there expectations or workload or juggling with a dog or a family? <laughs> um, I guess one thing I thought a, a little bit about, I saw some questions about whether this is the right option for people. This might fit into that, but I think the MDS is an amazing program for a certain type of people, but it doesn't mean it's amazing for everyone. And so more specifically for me, it's perfect because I've been working for a little bit. I had that analytical background and I wanted to transition into this space. There are other ways to learn this knowledge. Like let's say I went back in time and I was 16 applying to university. I think a four year program would have been a better way to get the same knowledge just because you have more time. And so I don't know if anyone else has opinions on this, but I think it's an amazing program for certain people, but not necessarily everyone. And if you're thinking of applying, I would make sure you spend the time to make sure you're gonna get what you want out of this program and this is the right fit for you. I know a lot of people that fa that didn't have a family that found it quite uh, intensive. I have a lot of friends in the program that also had families and yeah. kids, and I was in amazed by yeah. them. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of respect gets given to them. Um, yeah, I, I, maybe I'll add uh, the the angle of this program is really like a professional degree. Yeah. Um, so I think keeping that in mind, uh, the faculty, uh, at, not the faculty really, but the leadership of the program. Uh, they try to facilitate those career-oriented uh, events and ways that you could grow. Um, but a, a lot of times, um, you have to be proactive uh, yourself, uh, whether that means uh, that's, in, that's like in the later half of the program or after, right after graduating. Um, but I think, because um, the industry is also very, it's very it's changing really fast, uh, what it means to be a data scientist is also changing. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would say people have to be very proactive in their job. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to warn you, this one's going to be a hard question yeah. to answer, so prepare yourself. What was the, um, and Alistair, feel free to answer this so far with what you've learned. What's the most valuable thing you've gained from the program so far also? <laughs> <laughs> I personally really enjoy the fact that we had to build a full data science workflow from getting the data sometimes even um, through API calls or uh, web scrapping uh, to Milestones. yes exactly do the full workflow that's something that was completely lacking from my previous uh, previous education and that's something I really really appreciate to see best practice around how to communicate with your teammates, raise issues, even if it's even if you know you're the one answering them, just put it somewhere. Uh, oh, do you have anything to add to that too? Um, <laughs> I, I would think of a thing maybe that's different from the uh, from everybody else here. Um, I had, had no practice in reading research papers. I had just no, <laughs> I'd never done that as a part of my undergrad or uh, in my work. And I felt like um, in this field, it's, it's really good to go back and see what's kind of cutting edge, what is working, what's not. Any of you quickly? We have a little bit of time left. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I got a quick oh, okay, one. Yeah. I'll be fast. So I just want to say, uh, as I wish, I have another master's, and th this one was so different for me because that one, I had, for example, I had one year to write my thesis, so I was super relaxed. But this one, I learned the hard deadlines. For yeah. example, when they were yeah. telling us, okay, push your code to GitHub to 30, yeah. <laughs> you only had one second. So, uh, and yeah, for me, the most valuable thing is being able to immerse myself in the subjects totally and not have any other distractions. Whereas before, when I would learn it after work, you don't get the same impact. But here, it's like all day is spent on it. And that's been something I didn't think about. I was like, oh, I can just learn this online. But no, it's been so valuable being here around people and immersing in it. Yeah. Um, and I guess before we do any type of uh, ending or any type of uh, closing, is there anything you else you want to add to the discussion that we might have missed previously or that you forgot to add or that you think they should know? I'll add one thing. Just, <laughs> just for, we didn't talk about applications too much, but uh, I think it's a, important yeah. yeah, to like think about the story you're telling about how your background fits in with this program and where you want to go next and being able to really draw a nice line from what you've done in the past to where you want to go would be helpful if you're thinking about applying. Thank you so much. So we covered a lot today. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our uh, panelists for giving us their time, insights, thoughts, and answers. Uh, also, the people behind the scene that you're not seeing who made this panel possible for the viewers. Just a reminder that if anyone has any questions regarding tuition fees, scholarships, uh, we will be hosting another Facebook Live event to answer these in January 2020. So keep your ears open for that 
uh, specific uh, date that we'll be conducting that. Thank you all, and uh, good luck with your application.